it's a very broad subject of skull-based tumors, but I want to give a, a couple guidelines that will uh, allow you to at least have an approach uh, to these lesions. So let's start with this case. This was a recent case, and uh, the patient interestingly complained only of dizziness, had no focal neurologic deficits. So the first thing I want you to notice is that, yes, there is a midline mass that is of slightly lower attenuation uh, than brain, uh, but the fact that there is bony destructive change in the midline. So ordinarily, of course, we would have the cortex of the clivus coming up here. And if this were to remodel bone, we may see a shelf of bone over here, but it's really very hard to discern uh, any real uh, a bony plate here between the tumor and the sphenoid sinus. So I want to put this in the category of a bony destructive tumor. Now, as we look at it uh, on the CTA, and again, initially when the patient presented to the emergency room, the thought was that this was a, a vascular cause. And you can see on the CTA how um, the basilar artery is grossly displaced uh, to the patient's uh, right side. Here you see the basilar artery displaced then on the MR study, which I think is the appropriate next step. Uh, you can see the eyes are aligned, so we're not seeing anything in the way of significant cranial nerve dysfunction, nor did he complain of that. Uh, but you'll notice it has a relatively homogeneous T2 prolongation that you see again on the flare scan. Of course, this is not suppressing in the same way that CSF does in the ventricle, even though it does resemble CSF on the T2 weighted scan. And then on the trace diffusion image, uh, it does appear to be relatively high signal intensity. So one consideration you might um, at least uh, consider, one possibility you might consider is an epidermoid. Uh, that dermoids are going to be low attenuation on CT. They usually remodel bone. They don't really destroy bone in the same way that uh, some of these other tumors that we'll talk about do. But the differentiating feature here I want you to recognize is the fact that this uh, tumor, which seen here on the non-contrast T1 weighted image, shows enhancement. And you should never see this type of enhancement in an epidermoid. So the findings here would be most favorable for a chordoma. Again, notice that the uh, uh, that combination of very high signal intensity on the T2-weighted scan along with enhancement. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about specifically about tumors with bone destruction and, and uh, um, and some enhancement. And the main primary tumors that we're going to consider are chordomas and chondrosarcomas, and secondarily consider bone, meta bone metastatic disease and then direct extension to the clivus from nasopharyngeal cancer. And again, epidermites tend to remodel bone, but uh, destruction is not expected. So here's a different patient, although similar findings with midline mass displacing the brain stem, the patient's middle age. You can see here the tumor extending here into the region of the clivus, but, it, but with relatively high signal intensity. This high signal intensity indicates that there is T2 prolongation in the tumor. When we look at the enhanced portion of the study, this is, uh, there is some enhancement of the tumor here. You can see the tumor is, uh, uh, again, in the midline, and this was a chordoma, clival chordoma. Different patients, same disease. Uh, here we see a uh, mass with less enhancement, but there's some intrinsic enhancement. High signal intensity on the T2-weighted scan. Uh, again, at the midline and uh, middle-aged patient, this is the CT scan that shows some bony destructive change. Notice the interruption in the cortex of the clivus. And then again, this is another chordoma. So chordomas, again, are these are um, a varying um, uh, rates of growth. They don't metastasize. They locally invade. Uh, they are difficult to treat, often uh, requiring a subtotal resection followed by proton beam therapy. Uh, but the important findings to look for are this uh, bone destruction and enhancement. Now, if we look at this patient, uh, we have a different lesion here. You'll notice that there is 
Uh, excuse me one second, let me just close the door. Uh, and so here you can see on this uh, T1 weighted scan, there's some scalloping along the dorsal aspect of the clivus. This is what it looks like on the uh, um, thinner section. Uh, but the important thing, or I'm sorry, this was two months prior. So you see, it's not really changing much. And then this is what it looks like on the T2 weighted scan. So in this way resembles a chordoma, but the important finding is the fact that you see this scalloped edge, see this sclerotic margin to the erosion in the clivus. So there's not frank bone destruction. Uh, this is more of a remodeling process. And the fact that it doesn't uh, really enhance, this is an entity, it has this unusual name, Equidosis physolifora, but uh, you can think of it as a, uh, as a uh, residua of an embryo embryologic remnant, a so-called notochord remnant. These are considered benign tumors and they virtually always occur uh, in the region of the clivus or in the uh, uh, space between the clivus and the brainstem. So these are typically non-enhancing, uh, but, and here you can see the uh, T2 prolongation and the absence of real enhancement there. But I wanna uh, indicate that these really are um, difficult to distinguish, uh, unlike this paper, which says they can be distinguished, that there's probably a, a continuum between this notochord remnant and true chordomas. Here's another image of a more typical appearance of this uh, notochord remnant. You can see it lies here in the cistern. There's a little bit of attachment to the clivus here, and there's no enhancement after administration of contrast. I just want you to be familiar with the term. Here's a different patient. We have an off midline mass, T2 prolongation. Again, bony destructive change. Uh, here we see that it doesn't enhance. Now, the off midline location and the bony destructive change should take you away from the notochord remnant. Uh, however, the lack of enhancement is not typical for a chordoma. And because it was changing over time, this went to surgery, this proved to be a chordoma. So this is a non-enhancing chordoma. So enhancement itself is not the only feature you can rely on in distinguishing these two. This is a different patient has a pre-pontine mass. Here you can see it here, high signal intensity on the T2 weighted scan. This was non-enhancing. This also proved to be a, uh, a chordoma. So uh, this is again, different variation. I don't wanna go into this too. This was a chordoma without any clival involvement, but there's some enhancement. So what can we learn from this? Whenever you see, I want to tell you, whenever you see a bony destructive lesion in the midline, T2 prolongation and enhancement, my suggestion would be lead with chordoma. The other consideration when it's off midline is this entity, T2 prolongation, and I'm um, sorry, this was a chondrosarcoma. This proved to be a chondrosarcoma. So again, these are often difficult to distinguish. Some people say diffusion weighted can help you. Uh, this one, this is again a clival based mass, which extends here into the middle fossa. The reason I want to show this to you is it has this, some people call these ringlet like calcifications. But whenever you see amorphic cal amorphous calcifications, in a clival mass, uh, then I think you should be thinking more of a chondrosarcoma than a chordoma. These intrinsic calcifications are much less common in chordoma. Chordomas can occur in the spine. This one's in the cervical spine, again, with long T2 uh, uh, time with high signal intensity on the T1 weighted, on T2 weighted scan. This is a different entity. Here we have a loss of the bone marrow in the clivus. Uh, and here you see there's some soft tissue here. Uh, whenever you see this pattern of involvement in the clivus, uh, with or without bony destructive change, uh, you want to consider metastatic disease. So this turned out to be a clival metastasis, although it could have been extension from a nasopharyngeal cancer in the appropriate clinical circumstance. I want to distinguish that from this entity. This is a low signal intensity or low attenuation mass in the brain with some scalloping in the bone, although not really frank destruction of the bone, more remodeling of the bone. And this is what it looks like on the diffusion scan. Uh, and here's a different patient, similar disease, 
Here's another patient similar disease. You can see this uh, lesion here is not as bright as the chordoma uh, and doesn't enhance. These are all epidermoids. Okay, so, so again, talk briefly about metastatic disease, chordomas, chondrosarcoma, epidermoid. Just try to sort those through. And, uh, and I, as I say, the enhancement and bone destruction uh, should lead you away from epidermoid. I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today.